today Canon announced their first full frame mirrorless body. With that new body comes a new mount and four new lenses for that mount. Let's take a moment to talk about all of this. Let's talk about the new lens mount. It's called the RF series mount and now features a 12 pin connection to allow more data as opposed to the conventional 8 pin. This is to let more data go between the lens and the body to communicate much better. Now with the RF series, since it is a mirrorless mount, it does allow for the lens to sit closer to the sensor, which does give some improvements as far as more open constant apertures. Canon is saying that you can now focus even closer to the edge of the frames and get better sharpness because the lens sits so close to the sensor now on the mirrorless body. Some of the new lenses that have come out for the mount are the 24 to 105 4L aperture, a 28 to 72 zoom lens that they are claiming has the same sharpness and quality as a prime. Wait to see how that goes. A 51.2 and a 35 1.8 macro lens. These are all for the new mirrorless full frame sensor. Along with that, the old EF mounts still do work, but you do need a converter that ranges anywhere from $100 to $400, depending on which one you want. With the new mount and how much data goes through it, you can now have a third ring on the camera. As opposed to just having two for the focus and focal length, you now have a third that can also control aperture or ISO, depending on how you set it in your camera. With this new mount, Canon is saying that they can get more open aperture lenses and lighter smaller lenses in general. Uh, we'll wait to see how this goes going forward, but now let's talk about the real reason everyone's here, the EOS R series. The first mirrorless full frame body from Canon, and I gotta say, it's lackluster. I'm sorry, this, this upsets me. So let's go through the specs of what this thing has. Let's just Run down the list. It is backwards compatible with older lenses and older flashes. Has dual pixel CMOS AF focus peaking built into the camera. If you are doing manual focus, it now does have focus peaking, which is great. It's something that I've always wanted in these cameras. And now it does 4K at 30 frames a second. We'll get into that because that is a major issue on this camera. It has type C USB charging, a new touch bar that helps you control any setting that you really want. It can be programmed to whatever your liking is. The focus ring on the camera has been moved from where it would normally be back here, up here, over to these buttons right below the LCD screen. It now has better low light focusing along with the standard Canon menu system so you don't have to learn a new menu system. It only has one SD card slot. A lot of people want a dual, me included, but it only has one. It does 1080p at 60 frames a second and 720p at 120. I don't know why that could not be 120 frames at 1080p like most other mirrorless cameras do. One recording video uses the Rec. 709 color space. It has HDR recording with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. It does now come with Canon C-Log at 8-bit and can also record through HDMI at 10-bit. It cannot record though at 10-bit to the SD card, only at 8. It is weather sealed and now has a new feature along with facial tracking. It now does eye tracking, which is supposed to help with portraits and video. Now let's talk about my major gripe with this camera. I could deal with less buttons on the camera. I'm sure after a while of using it, that new touch bar and it would just become more natural over time. Uh, I don't like the position of the new aperture ring. I don't like that it's up here. If you want to have like a battery grip, you can no longer hold the camera like this and still have access to it. It's, it's like all the way over here now. I don't like that. That's I don't know why you would move the aperture ring. It does not have an analog stick like a lot of other cameras do, that's unfortunate. But the reason I don't like this is because I would want this mirrorless body to record video. A lot of people were looking for this to be Canon's answer to the Sony A7X series. Those cameras can record 4K video full frame. With this, it does record 4K video, but it is a 1.7 crop factor. It does not use the full frame to record. Although, if you are recording in 1080p or 720p, it does use the full full frame sensor and makes it a Super 35. There are a few things about this camera that I just don't understand why it is like that, of why there is no 120 at 1080p, why is it only at 720, and why is the 4K cropped at a 1.7? There is no use at using that. You might as well just use a 70D or an 80D because these are already at a 1.6. It's cropping even more than you would with an EOS cropped sensor. It makes no sense. Although, if you are using a lens like this, this is an 
EFS mount, so it is made for crop sensors. If you are using this on the EOS R, it does work at a full frame, but not really, it's still cropped, which sucks because a lot of people, including myself, wanted a full frame recording camera that would be something to compete with Sony. So let's talk about photography for a moment. The whole point of a mirrorless camera is to have a fast shutter speed and not a lot of time in between shots. With a conventional camera like this, like a DSLR, the shutter is always moving up and down in between each shot. Since the mirror is now gone and you don't have that action, that physical action to happen, you should actually be getting faster shots in between. But this camera only does eight frames a second. I personally really want to know what Canon was doing this whole time that they were developing this camera and saw what Sony and other brands were doing and Canon and Nikon just kind of dropped the ball on this. The specs doesn't mean that the camera's gonna suck, but at $2300 just for the body alone, you would kind of expect something a little better than what you would pretty much get for a 80D or 70D. It still does use the same battery though as the 80 and 70 and 5D and all other D series cameras, but it only does have one SD card slot still. A lot of mirrorless cameras do have dual SD card slots. Overall, I don't see myself getting this camera anytime soon. It's a little too expensive and there's not much that has changed. Maybe if they come out with a new series that's a, a pro series, this more seems like an entry level camera they were saying. But let me know how you guys feel about this camera down below because I'm really torn on it. I really did want this. I do like the fact that it does now have a flip out screen on a mirrorless camera. That's something you really don't see in this marketplace. I really was looking forward to this camera. I did like that it is a mirrorless camera with a flip out screen that is great for vlogging. But at a 1.7 crop while recording in 4K, is there really a point to it? And the slow-mo on it, you have to run in 720p, which compared to today, most cameras are doing 1080, 720p. I don't get it. It doesn't really seem like that. I'm going to probably pass on this and wait for a newer model. Maybe they might come up with a tier-up model. This may be just like an entry-level to mirrorless. Let's hope for that. Uh, anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video.